welcome everybody to the YouTube Extra and the Facebook Live. We are going to be starting a little bit. That's good. Perfect. Do we got any? We got anybody watching? Yeah, uh, Sam Patel is asking questions already. All right. All right. Now, what happened to that other phone that I just had? Where did it go? <laughs> oh, right here. So now I can monitor comments. Oh. That's the whole idea here, to be able to monitor comments live. Jeffrey Mueller. There we go. Um, my phone is turned down. I should be able to click into that. Oh, Karen's watching. Say All hi right. to Karen. And Hello, then, Mrs. Xavier. And then hopefully, I got to get ready to... Sam said, hey, yes, we do like scotch. Tonight we're going to be doing uh, bourbon, but we do like scotch. On we this love part. Yes. scotch. <laughs> yes, yes. We do like scotch as well, Sam. That's good to know. Thanks. Just keep commenting. Uh, I'll keep watching that. Uh, we are the Scotchy Bourbon Boys. Tonight it's Xavier and Tiny. Greetings. Great to be here. Uh, the way this YouTube Extra works, we talk a little bit about Horse Soldier. Uh, is going to be this topic uh, or the subject tonight. Uh, here, why don't you keep talking? I'll watch that. Yeah. And then well, that way, that. hey, that's a simple job, I think. I, I didn't say I was going to read that's anything. Thing. Right, but this weekend, <laughs> this weekend, uh, Whiskey, who uh, is not with us tonight, but Whiskey's also another Scotchy Bourbon Boy podcaster, and we, myself and him, went and saw, uh, now, God, it's like, holy crap. <laughs> you went and saw someone. Yeah, I, I, it was Al Alex Hernandez, but let me just quick... I, it was, I gotta remember. It's just so, I am He so, honestly saw somebody am at a, some place. I am an asshole when it comes to names. There's no doubt about it. Uh, okay. I mean, come on. I, I okay. I, I'm gonna find, uh, this is, this is a mission. Uh, this is the YouTube Facebook part, so it's not quite Folks, yet. Folks, he uh, told uh, will, me that he actually saw somebody. Yeah, we, uh, and his name is Brian. <laughs> And now I gotta remember his last name, and it's just not happening. It's just not fair. I mean, and it should be. It, it was an, an, an easy name. And okay, let's search. I'm gonna see. B I. All right. Uh -huh. No, it's not gonna come up on me. His car. Oh, I know where I can find it. I can find it in email. Here we go. Cancel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna find it any day it. now, folks. There we go. Avery, how did I forget that? I knew it was something. Uh, uh, so we were uh, at Horse Soldier, and just remember, uh, if you're watching the Scotchy Bourbon Boys for the first time, I'm tiny and my memory's shit. So I'm gonna f this up. Um, uh, how many times? Hundreds of times. I f it up. Maybe but, not hundreds, but but dozens. please bear with me. It was uh, Alex Hernandez who was part of the CIA team, the leader of the CIA team, who was the first unit in to Afghanistan after 9-11. They were with it, they were there within two to three weeks, whereas 12 Strong, the 12 Strong movie unit, which was uh, Green Beret Special Forces, they were in after he had gone in. So the, but... So he was the pathfinder, basically. Right, and we got to see and meet Alex, and what a wonderful, great guy he was. He signed my uh, bottle here, uh, and it, it's his CIA team was Alpha, and then he signed it to Tiny. So I was able to get a, this is their Horse Soldier Cast Strength Wheat Bourbon, and then this here is their small batch wheat bourbon that they put out. And so we've I've got the two bottles that we're going to be tasting tonight. I'm glad that... Oh, I, I, took, I took the camera away from you completely. There you go. All right, so... I wasn't going to say anything, but... There, we've got... Yeah, so you got it back. So you can watch what we're doing and see what's happening and whatnot. <laughs> Did you get a little bit in delay? But uh, we're excited to have this part on. Now... Uh, we also were there with Michael Walker of People's Proof Podcast. 
the People's Proof Podcast, uh, and he and I and Whiskey and Michael and, and I'm not whiskey, Alex, but... Alex and uh, Brian all got together and did a podcast. Now that will be coming out. Now hopefully. I will be also able to release that through the Scotchy Bourbon Boys, but I wanted to do this podcast right here because it was such an exciting time uh, myself and Whiskey had, but Xavier, who was doing other things, and we were trying not to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we got the Horse Soldier Bourbon here. Uh, I'm going to let him do... Do you think you're going to oh, be... Oh, thanks a, loads. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to let you do our Here reading. See if you can do... Uh, you don't have to do it now, because you can do it once we get to the podcast. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's going to be we'll interesting. Make it happen. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but that cast strength, we did bourbon. And they've. Uh, uh, it's just a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal, phenomenal bourbon. And very delicious... Uh, we got, I got this. You got that? I got And this. then, uh, there's, I'm pretty sure what he said it should work. <laughs> a lot of stuff. I'm just checking a couple things off. We got some more guys watching here. We've got yeah. Danny Evans, Rob Beam. All right. Steve Hardy. Thanks for watching tonight. See you about Jacob Horse Kelly Soldier. and Jalen Leonard. Thanks <sighs> folks for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us. And then, so I'm going to grab this real quick, see if I can get the Alabama song queued up here. I know how to do that too, right? Well, you used to. Well, I'm, I'm pretty good at that. There we go. Here it is. It wouldn't be a Scotchy Bourbon Boys podcast or Whiskey Live if we didn't have some technical... Uh, difficulties. Well, I'm pretty sure this is working, but let's see. All right, here we go. We're gonna get the, there. We go. Yeah, look at that. We'll wait for that baby to hook up. It usually takes a couple seconds, and that will allow us to get into a little bit. Uh, get going. There it is. We're ready Rock to go. Rock and roll. So everybody, uh, what happens? Uh, Glad that you all here on Facebook you can't check out your comments for a couple minutes because we're going to use that. But we're going to do what we normally do to get this uh, regular podcast started. You kind of got to see a little bit of the upfront uh, hecticness that we got. <laughs> hecticness. <laughs> um, while I start this part, uh, Xavier, why don't you pour the small batch? And because I, really, you know what, that sounds like a job. I, can I am dry tonight, and you know. <laughs> it's just crazy. All right, here we go. We're going to get going. Dant Crossing, Gethsemane, Kentucky. Timeless hospitality that stirs the spirit. Dant Crossing is a one-of-a-kind destination for unforgettable weddings, memorable corporate events, day trips, and weekend getaways. The pastoral campus is anchored by Logstill Distillery and includes an amphitheater that seats 2,000, a 12-acre lake for fishing and unique lodging options, creating an immersive experience that's rooted in the community and culture of our little slice of Kentucky. More attractions will open soon at Dan Crossing, including our 21,000 square foot distillery, which we will have the ability to produce 15,000 barrels of spirit each year. A network of wooded walking trails, fully functional private train depot, farm to table restaurant, and the legacy, a premier wedding and events venue. Whether you're looking to host an event, book a stay, or reserve a tasting, we're ready to welcome you. Learn more at dantcrossing.com. Spirits of French Lick is proud to introduce the Maddie Gladden Bottled and Bond Bourbon. This four-year-aged bourbon is double pot distilled and non-chill filtered and has a full-bodied mouthfeel with eucalyptus, molasses, clove, ginger, and slight citrus as well as grains of paradise. The finish is long and reappearing on the back of the tongue with notes of pepper, tobacco leaf, and mint cream. All of our spirits are available for tasting and purchase inside the French Lick Winery and Distillery. Spirits of French Lick, respect the grain, please enjoy responsibly, and be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Oh, 
show me the way to the next whiskey bar. Oh, don't ask why. Oh, don't ask why. Show me the way to the next whiskey bar. Oh, don't ask why. Oh, don't ask why. For if we don't find the next whiskey bar, I tell you we must die. I tell you we must die. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you we must die. You asshole! <laughs> I, 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 it's just I, not. I can't help. <laughs> you're gonna have. You next thing you're gonna, you're gonna have uh, recoil lines I got, I got coming the, down from the ceiling to suspend your stuff. I got from, the light on. I, I, I just the whole <laughs> everything's okay. Turn that shit off. Okay, come on. <laughs> Welcome the everyone. The whole thing's going to shit. Hey, <laughs> but that's how word. that's how this thing goes. Welcome to the Scotchy Bourbon Boys podcast. It's here. Is Xavier my partner in crime? Greetings, and we have Tiny. 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 The prime mover behind Scotchy Bourbon Boys. Oh, lots of things that happen, but remember, we are the Scotchy Bourbon Boys. www.scotchybourbonboys.com for everything Scotchy Bourbon Boys. You can get one of these Glen Karens. We also have Scotchy Bourbon Boys t shirts and taster, tasting. Matt's with tasting uh, online. Speaking regular. of Scotchy Bourbon Boys t-shirts, there you go. that's There's what it looks like, Boy t-shirt. Tonight we are tasting Horse Soldier Bourbon. Uh, we are talking uh, the team uh, of 12 Strong from the movie 12 Strong. Uh, they are the people who started this. They are uh, out of Florida. But they are distilling at the Middle West Distillery here in Columbus, Ohio. And what's really cool about what they're doing is uh, this weekend, uh, they were promoting the, the brand. Uh, Brian Avery, their marketing director, I got to meet. It was very exciting. Uh, that would have been cool. And then Alex Hernandez, who was part of the whole, whole team uh, but he was part of the CIA and the team that went in first that went into uh, Afghanistan after 9-11. And yeah, he was the tip of the tip of the spear. So they were at Lakemore Beverage in uh, r- right up in, uh, I believe it was Akron. And then, or, or right, right up there in, <coughs> right in the Talmadge area. And they stop, They were there signing bottles. Uh, me and Whiskey, uh, our other partner in crime, went up there and got to, got to meet Alex and Brian for the first time. And then also uh, we got to meet Michael, who was the, uh, the representative who set this all up. And uh, we met them there, did a little tasting. And then afterwards we went to Danny Boys in Talmadge. And they had Alex there with a whiskey and war stories. Nice. Uh, I do have, and we I will be stripping into the video aspect on YouTube a uh, couple of his stories. I have them on video. It's the, it's phenomenal what happened, how how they had to go in and basically. The mission was such a tunnel where everything that that they had to do and was not really set in stone at all. There was a lot of question marks whether or not it would work or whether this person was going to help them. And they all had to align to in order to bring in the Green Beret, you know, team, special forces team. So that they could do the same thing, which everybody's seen the movie 12 Strong. Uh, it's, it's a great movie. I watched it the other night. Uh, it's, uh, and the, the fact that they have come back to the United States, you know, come back home after that. It's 20 years later, and they have started a phenomenal distillery. Now, once again, their... Um, I, I, I believe you, there's a little story on the back of this, is there not? 
Or was it this one that they're you wanted both, to read first? I think, I don't know. I think they're both similar. It looks it looks like they're yeah, similar. All right, well, let me get the light on here so the old man can see to read. Here we go. Okay, horse soldier. The United States of America was forged by pioneers, bold trailblazers, explorers, and warriors. In the spirit, in the American spirit by adventure, we proudly present horse soldier bourbon whiskey. And it goes on to say, horse soldier bourbon whiskey is uniquely complex and aged in charred new American oak barrels. Every bottle of horse soldier bourbon whiskey is a piece of American history. It is carefully crafted by Green Berets, who answered America's call just days after 9-11 with a daring insertion into northern Afghanistan on horseback. This brave and unconventional act earned them the moniker the horse soldiers. All right. Yeah, they weren't when they went in. They they didn't think they were going in on on going to be fighting on on horses. But Twelve Strongs the movie. Check that out if you want to. But the also the other great thing about it is their distillery uh, and the money that some of the money they make is used to uh, maintain and uh, keep. Uh, up the horse soldier, uh, the the horse soldier statue at at the on uh, Ground Zero uh, Ah. in in New York City, and that's that statue is on the cover on their on their logo, and they maintain that uh, through the distillery and the guys that uh, work there. So that's really kind of a cool thing, also. Uh, But with you know with everything else that they've done which is uh, i mean you know they're setting up this distillery and one and, and i'll just quickly go through they're out of florida distilling in columbus ohio uh they worked hard with ryan over at middle west to come up with the right mash bill come up with the right taste and they've been aging it and it's the the stuff they've been doing there is just starting to come out and then they are also they they broke uh what would you say uh ground uh but not f- just from a fi- uh what would, uh, how do you put it it's like when they didn't actually start building yet but they did the ribbon cutting so Tell me the word I'm looking for there. Xavier. I think I think groundbreaking is what you were. Well, for yeah, but they, they haven't broke ground. <laughs> they did the. Okay, then that's they not did the, the word. What, what, the superficial groundbreaking, or whatever you would call that. You know what I mean? It's like the French say a certain. I don't know what. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there is a fucking word. I'm always trying to use too big of words, but I know exactly what the. <laughs> and if and if. Uh, the pres- El Presidente was watching me tell me to, to, to sound it out in my mind. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, we got a couple more uh, of viewers, listeners here. Michael Pyle, Terry Allen, and David Riley. Thank you, guys. So, when, they're make- when they were making this flavor profile, and there's an aspect. That, uh, so, this is a weeded bourbon. Now, their regular Kentucky straight bourbon... Or, no, their regular straight bourbon, not Kentucky, because their regular straight Ohio. bourbon, because it's being made in Ohio, is uh, actually a rye bourbon mash bill, where their small batch and their their uh, horse soldier is basically that. The weeded is 100% uh, a different, it's, it's different. And I, I had... Uh, this particular bottle right here was given to me by Xavier, the small batch bourbon. Uh, and it's got the gold label. And it was for Christmas. He gave it to me for Christmas. So that was kind of cool. So we've had that for a while. And then I picked up the signed bottle by Alex Hernandez. Uh, you can see the little signing right there, right? Yeah. Team Alpha. He signed... He signed a couple uh, That's cool. postcards, pictures too, which was cool. But Alex was just a fantastic guy. I mean, it, it's just you can tell when he tells the story how amazing he felt that whole experience was, you know. So, but with that said, 
Let's get on to some tasting. All right. Um, do you want? I think we should taste the two, and then give them a barrel bash. Now, this uh, I do have my glasses for this one. I believe the proof on this because it's barrel proof. Let's just get it in the light right there. Is a hundred and twenty-three proof. What was the proof on the first one here? It's a small batch. Small batch. I believe it's ninety. I want to say the small batch was ninety-four. Is what they were saying here. It should be right down here. Yeah, ninety-five. Ninety-five. Yeah. There you go. So I'm gonna crack this silver labeled. Now. There's a bunch of stuff about this bottle. When they were making this bottle, they wanted to make a special bottle. So there's a couple things. They didn't spare expense on the bottle. Now, I'm going to flip this first. Then I'm going to open it. One of the cool things they got is this topper and their coin is embedded that air a little bit I'll take that you can see that nice American freedom so that coin it's embedded into the the wood topper and then the bottle is a special it's not just your standard bottle no I'm flipping that because I'm trying to uh, reduce the neck pour. While you're doing that, I'm going to look at some technical difficulty yeah. that's coming in from the other side here. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to pour a little bit of that into our other glasses. Here we go. Yeah, that's it. We're tasting in those Scotchy Bourbon Boy Glen Cairns. I will put that back right here. Now this one, I'm not going to be able to. One of the great things about a Glen Cairn, one, it's got that tulip shape. So when you go to nose your bourbon or your scotch, as you put your nose there, all the flavors condense at the top so you get to be able to smell it the best. Now, a lot of people, that's the first thing they do is smell, nose that whiskey, and then they taste, and then they drink. And they don't go back to the nose. One of the cool things about the nose is if you uh, if you go back to the nose after you taste, usually the flavors have stuck to the glass and really start to come out. So that's one thing. So I like the nose a little bit. But the great thing about this Glencairn is that, look at that, you can roll it. Now I have a stupid question. Like that. I've got two exact glasses poured to the same level. Which one is which? Well, that's a really easy one. I believe I get it. Wait. Okay. I'll it's tell so you. I'll tell you. Easy. Really easy. Um, the golder one is the gold one. This is the which, and that's the golder one is the small batch. If you hold it up to light, it's obviously one's golder than the other. Yep, and I believe the left is golder. Okay, so that's the small. What are we tasting first, the small batch or the, right, the, yeah, the small the, batch? Of course, but once you do that, you can kind of see how it sticks to the glass once you roll it around your glass, and you can see that it's how the the legs on this one. Now the legs on this one are kind of well, they're there. well evenly spaced. Yep. And a little bit thin on there now on a the little bit but not not so much but then when you hit this that's great well yeah it's nice it has the but now if you go off of the small batch the legs are a little bit thicker and I know this is a small batch because it's full to the top it's so heavy that it's hurting well, yeah I made it indistinguish I mean distinguishable from the other now what, what do you mean you're you poured this one first I know <laughs> what I wasn't gonna pour myself one as big you just knew that? I just knew it. Yeah, okay. Mr. S Psychic. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think this is I think this is the small uh, the small batch here 
because it's got much thinner legs than what I just. No, had. I'm telling you that mine have thicker legs on the small batch, and the the the, the actual. There, these are thinner. This is thinner, and then the small batch is thicker. Look. I think this is the small batch. Okay, give me, give me, give me. I can tell the difference right away. No, give me that one. Hold that. Nope, that's got the pepper. So, what does that mean? Smell yeah. mine. Smell mine. Is this the small batch? Yes. Let or me not? see. Nope, that's the. This is the cast strength. Or... I believe so. Oh. Told you. Here, let me look at the at the light and the dark. <laughs> the, look, they're identical. No, this is much lighter. That's a small batch. This is a small batch. Yeah, I poured you less. I poured you very lit. I poured less. This is the. <laughs> this is fun. Anyways, let's go. As soon as we can sort this out between ourselves here. Cheers, everyone. All right, we're gonna taste the small batch. We got some additional awesome. viewers here. We've got David Kenny, Todd Ryder, Dave Goldstein, Chuck Ray, and Lucy Ray Acosta. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Yes, thanks for watching. The small batch. Now, I opened this up in, uh, I believe I opened this up in... December. Yeah, I think you and opened it's it up. got it's got some it's picked up some really nice. Now, the one thing I'm going to say about Horse Soldier, this is a drinking man's whiskey. As far as taste, price, the, the they're in the process of doing everything they have to do. To get to their own distillery eventually, distilling here in Ohio and everything, they've gone to no lengths with this metal uh, label. They spared no expense with this coin embedded into their wood cork, real cork, and a special special bottle. So there's an aspect of professionalism and the military precision that goes with those special special forces and you know cia alpha team that transfer into this bourbon as far as presentation yeah the kits but, tight and in order but this is the kind of bourbon like this small batch right here that i would say is it's a drinking bourbon the small batch is and it's got a really good kick it's got it's a weeder but there's an aspect of some spice in there it's got a really nice hug and this is kind of what you'd, you know, this is the, what would, for lack of a better term, your old man's bourbon. <laughs> right? Yeah, you say that. This is, this is, I get some apricot, tons of vanilla, a little bit of butterscotch. That you're getting something that's somewhere between an oak and a hazelnut on the side palate. I, I get an apricot, like an uh, apricot. On, on, on the initial, on the initial taste, you do. There's some kind of peach or apricot there, just very subtle. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. I, I I'd say I enjoy it. Uh, now the price point on that small batch, I believe, is. I, I believe the no. I'm getting. You go to a ball game, you get a bag of fresh roasted peanuts. That's what I'm getting. Well, I would say more on the more on the a, side palate than the nose or the taste. But on the as it fills your mouth, it's there's it's like there's a, a roasted peanut taste there. See, I know the taste you're talking about, but there's a sweetness. That makes me think like a, 
a fruitiness, like it's sweeter than a peanut. And like a fruit, like a apricot, okay, I'll give you this. An apricot flavored peanut. <laughs> there you go. Because well, you I, know, I, I, I there, taste there, the nuttiness. A, I taste the nuttiness, there's a, I have there's to say. A, there's a hot roasted nut taste. And again, it's more to the side palate and going back to, towards the, the finish. All right, but, so I want to barrel bash. Yeah, you would. Yeah. I want to barrel bash the barrel this. bash the bourbon. I want to barrel bash the cast strength because when I was when we were we podcast with Michael. So we're not going to barrel bash. No, the, we're we're going to leave that one alone. But right. when I was with Michael Walker and we were drinking, uh, we had. Uh, whiskey had bought because the Danny Boys and it was the Fire Pit Grill, I believe. Uh, we they had a nice bourbon list. Oh, did they? They had Weller Foolproof. So that's a nice. He list. actually they had CYBB. Yeah. They had single barrel. I mean, they had it all, and it was reasonably priced. So he bought a a, a thing of Foolproof. I was able to identify the. I was able to identify the distillery. It was Buffalo Trace, but I could I did not get it that it was foolproof. But I was drinking the foolproof, and then dur finished it up during the podcast, and then I had the horse soldier cast strength for the you know for the first time since I had been at the restaurant. I had tasted it earlier in a little right. plastic cup at the at the brewery, but. Uh, so, we were, you know, overall, it was pretty good. But this is it. We're going to barrel bash this. The You, know, you want to go into what the Kentucky bourbon, or <laughs> Kentucky, the Scotchy Bourbon Boys barrel bash system is? The Scotchy Bourbon Boys barrel bash system is, we basically break it into four categories. Nose, taste, body and finish and we give each one of those uh, a number of bashes from one to four however when we recalibrated the scoring system back in December we decided that there were two aspects that were far more important than all others and that was taste and finish so you can give anything from a one or from a zero to a five on the taste or the finish five bashes up to five bashes and then on any one of those, but not all four, you can do a but up up, which can increase the total by one. So a four can become a five, and a five can become a six, but you can only do it for one of those categories. Sounds like fun. Let's have at it. We now have our barrel bashing bung hammer, courtesy of Wilderness Trail. Or our bung bashing barrel hammer, whatever you want to call it. Bung bashing barrel hammer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, we got a little barrel down here below, so it sounds like this. All right. All right, so you're going to handle the bashing. I'll bash the out of it. Okay, so what are we drinking now? We are drinking a horse soldier, cast strength, 123 proof, weeded bourbon. Same bash bill as this small, small batch. But this is the cast strength, 123. And quite frankly, folks, if you had to ask me, is there a contest of what you should buy? Uh, this right here is $79.99. And it is every bit was worth the $79. But we're about to find out. Here we go. Hey, Allie. Hey, we're doing... Can you go up by Grammy? Go up by Grammy. She's up there. Okay? Go, go go in Grammy's room. Thank you. Sorry, folks. That's my granddaughter. I just woke up and having a, a not a, a bad dream. Yeah. But that happens. It happens. That's, it's almost like I should have our special alley segment. Yeah, like a alley, little, it's, little It's an here. alley interruption. Yes, yeah, yeah, little, little, yeah. I've had to, little I've had to put her back to get bed 
myself uh, a couple times when I, I was the only one home, but my wife, Roxy, who also does our podcast, is home yes, tonight. Yes, she does. Too. So, cheers, Roxy. Cheers to Roxy. Hopefully she's watching. <laughs> See, this nose is just pure caramel. Yeah. I don't a, know this why this, the, the difference between this, but the difference between this is night and day. This gets into high level shit right here, in my opinion. That and everybody know that what my opinion is is based off what I like. I love vanillas, caramels. I was always a vanilla person. Uh, chocolate was okay, so I still, you know, I was surprised. I picked up chocolate earlier on the Friday night tasting. Haven't done that for a while, but. I love that pecan nutty, you know, I love a turtle sundae. Uh, I mean, there's so many aspects of why I love bourbon. So it's hard to find a bourbon I don't like. Uh, there hasn't been too many I didn't like, correct? No, no. And you're starting to like rye more, too. Yeah, well, yeah, and I used to despise rye. You were not a rye person, but now... So, the evolution of my palate is, you know, just like the evolution... I can see your palate evolving because initially there was a lot of, um, what would you say, you were a singular flavor guy and now you're starting to find more and more depth as you go along, correct? I believe so. So let's, let's, I really love this nose. If I have this, the only aspect is it's a little ethanol, just a little, but this is more Towards what I taste out of the actual middle there, there, west distillery. There's a subtle distillery. ethanol, but this is this is some very it's caramel intense. Forward. And a yeah, caramel and popcorn. Yeah, there's a there's like caramel corn. There's a buttered corn taste there, maybe. Okay, cool. Taste it. Taste it. Mmm. I don't know what to tell you. Holy. Now, there's a whiskey lover's caramel flavor and, there. And That's good. That's real good. It hit the it hit the front of my palate, and it was so much butterscotch, my brain fried. Then, as it went mid-palate, it was picking up, and then it went caramel. Then there's some pepper. There's definitely some pepper, that, that aspect of what was in the horse soldier that told you this is a drink. But event. I got to tell you, I agree with all that. And on again, on the side palate, I'm picking up fresh roasted nuts. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm dead serious. <laughs> but I'm not picking up s chocolate, so. Okay. <laughs> oh, Have you found the chocolate yet? No, there's no <laughs> chocolate. This is all what I love. Let's see what happens. This is a really interesting flavor profile there. That's something that would go, that would be a good before dinner drink, a good after dinner drink, a good cigar drink. I mean, that, that, that's that got a very interesting profile. Uh, I would say this is like the, per okay, so... I'm a watcher. That's what I do. I watch other people. I pay attention to what other people do. Where most people in this world pay attention to what they do. I always, I, in my art career, I was a watcher. I'm a watcher when it comes to, you, <laughs> you are just getting blown the hell up. You continue your, your monologue there. Yeah. i got to see what's going on here. Yeah, it's like, just careful on the line. All right, so I'm a watcher, so I love to watch people. Just like when I taste bourbon, it's fun to watch other people. I've been at barrel picks. Uh, I love to see which people like things, and I understand the, the level of all the different types of whiskey and, their, and what they present as far as a palate goes. And there's an aspect that you're dealing with with the Jim Beams, what you're dealing with uh, the Wild Turkeys. Those are these Kentucky heavy 
um, bourbons with caramel, but they also have like a nutty Heaven Hill too. And they have this nutty, really good taste. Now, if you get into their regular expressions, Jim Beam, Wild Turkey 101, Wild Turkey, uh, these flavors, Old Tub, uh, Heaven Hill, uh, Elijah Craig, some of these, you know, just the small batch, they've got this nutty taste to them. And it's delicious. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. But it is the bourbon drinker's favorite thing. There's a, there's a, there, it's like, it's whiskey. You're going to go to a concert. You're going to drink some bourbon. Uh, also another bourbon drinker's uh, whiskey that's like that, that comes from uh, Buffalo Trace is Stag Jr. These are things you drink at the, the Green Bay Packer, the New York Giants, the Milwaukee Brewers game. These are drinking bourbons. Uh, they might be sipping and they might be high proof, but they're still like good time bourbons uh, going to a concert, you know, and we're not talking about Sheena Easton. We're talking about ACDC yeah, or Metallica yeah, or something and, like that. So where you kick ass. Right. But then there's the caramely rich kind of bourbons that are for uh, special occasions, weddings. Uh, you know, different, you know, uh, anniversaries, and then also sitting back, uh, having good time with your friends. Yep. And then there's the back porch fire in front of the fireplace in the, in the summertime. This is a really good combination of both. You know what I mean? There's that kick ass, but there's also that relaxing on it all in one which is really kind of cool it's not there on the horse soldier the horse soldier is the con the the small batch is the concert is the football game this is anything you want it to be and that is something special in my opinion right we got some more viewers have joined us we have matthew j busser chris and tiff morgan Peanuts Butter is watching, and Donna McAllister is watching. Thanks for joining us, everybody. And Chris and Tiff Morgan uh, commented, uh, tried them all. Love the barrel strength, 123 proof. We have to agree with you. Yeah, this is something. So we're going to barrel bash this on our system. So going back to the nose. Let's get back to the nose there, Xavier. Now, after being in the glass for a little bit and being tasted a lot more of that peanut yeah the, see that's what i told you that you could really pick that up no i see, was picking up on side palate more than anything i else. but i'm picking it up on the nose yeah yeah you can now that it's opened up a little but bit. i'm i don't pick it as up as much as on the small batch but on the this one yeah you just move that when carrying around a little bit and open your mouth and you've got it it's a bag of roasted nuts Oh, let's go roast. <laughs> let's go roast some nuts, damn it. All right, so the I didn't the, say you, sack of nuts, I said I, bag of nuts. Well, sack is the word of the day, right? I guess it is. Or the or the year. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> All right, what you going to bash this uh, nose okay, at? Okay, the nose. You know, and since it's opened up, the ethanol is almost gone. Yeah, I but the caramel I want. The caramel is very much there. You got caramel roasted nuts. There it is, caramel and butterscotch. It's complicated. Yeah, a little That's bit of I, you know, nose. your 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 analogy of the butter corn. Uh, this is a good nose. Let's give it a four. All right, I concur. I give it a four too. All right, taste. I'm gonna Damn, give this. I'm gonna give the taste a five. What I almost got on the Boom. taste with the, the nuts and the caramel and even the buttercorn taste, it's like if you ever have had a payday candy bar. I mean, this is what you got right here. It's really good. I concur with Tiny. Make it another five for me. All right. Thank you. All right. I'm 
gonna go body. Body. It mm. goes everywhere. Mm hmm It gets mm. everywhere. Mm. And it doesn't get bitter either. I'm gonna go four on the body too. Whoa, almost lost the barrel. The barrel tried to roll away. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I have to go with a with a four on the body as well. No need to add anything. It's just a great body. It covers everything. All right, it's the finish. I'll go first if you want me to. Go first. The finish is fantastic. It is a long-lasting finish. It is a very warm Kentucky hug, but not a battery acid warm. Uh, and a continued good taste of all, you know, it's very uniform. And those those of you that are familiar with my, you know, hand to mouth uh, rating system on what a bourbon should be, right or wrong, you know that that hit checks all my boxes. This taste is a five. It's a definite five. I'm sorry, finish is a definite five, I meant to say. Okay, Ryan, Brian Avery, I was talking about this on the podcast on Saturday with uh, Michael Walker. People's proof. It should be out soon. But we're on it. <laughs> All right. But he talked about how the nose, the taste, the finish, and we talked about you. I make mention of Xavier on this podcast on how if you were here, you would probably be giving this the perfect score because of exactly the fact that the nose, the taste, and the finish all coincide. They all line up. And last time I checked, you just gave it an 18 out of 18. I did. Now for me, I agree with all of what he said. I would say that where I'm going to think this is the least. Now, okay, here Xavier. Come, here uh, comes the Russian judge, folks. He, no, Xavier talks about usually he puts the hug in the finish. And for me, the hug doesn't stay along enough for the finish but in this case the hug is still freaking there even after i've you know whatever so it's one of the first bourbons where the hug i've ever tasted where the hug's still there when i i'm looking for the finish now finish you can give it a five total of six with the butt up up i have that in me but the finish for me is the weakest point. It's medium to long, but the nuttiness of it, so it starts off butterscotch, then it goes to caramel, then it goes to nutty, and then in the finish it goes to oaky. Mm, and okay. there's not enough sweetness, so I am going to give the finish a four. And fuck you and your Russian judge thing. I'm not. <laughs> I mean, for God's sakes, I have just gave the bourbon a one man's hook is one man's peanuts. Yeah. So, on the barrel bashing system tonight, folks, uh, for yeah, a horse soldier, a 17 for a whole, and a half. yeah, a seventeen and a half out of eighteen, which is a damn good score. I, and and honestly, when uh, I had had the small batch for Christmas. So, I went in with a knowledge of what I thought this was. And I thought this was, the, I'll, I'll rate the, quickly, I'll rate this. And it's like, out of 18, it's a 12 or 13 for me. It's, it's not a, you know, it's not a 9, but it's a 12 or 13. It's a drinker. And there's nothing wrong with the drinker. It's a good drinker. But, you know, you, you, when you're doing a podcast like we do, uh, you're looking for these 17 and a half out of 18 special bourbons. And 
this here tastes like what what Middle West spirits that we've tasted with Ryan in the past. It, you know, this is right there up there. This is this isn't like uh, from. Well, I mean, it's not bad. It's not a bad bourbon, right? <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I'm listening to my phone. Explode. Yeah, your phone just keeps. <laughs> did you explain to them? Did yeah, you with them in yeah, a couple I minutes. Did, and I, I can't handle it. I can't explain it, it to can them twice. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, it's like what? Huh? What? Huh? Huh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, but if I was to recommend any of these, and after tasting all three on Saturday, and that this is heads and tails heads and tails above the other ones I, i'm not going to sit here and say I, i'm not going to finish the small batch because i'm about to finish the small you know, batch. and if anybody wants to send us small batch we'll take it of course but just when you have to, when you pit the two head to head um the cast strength is the clear winner it's just as you'd expect it's it's a it's an unbelievable product in my opinion it's a perfect product it's uh and again, you can enjoy it uh, uh, anyway. Before you want. dinner, during dinner, after dinner, with your cigar, or whatever. It's, on, it's, on the rocks, on the proof rocks, it down however you want. You can drink it in the house. Just, you can drink it with a mouse. I mean, it's just it's really, really good stuff. So, there we go. All I right, mean, we got some people that have jumped in here. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge. Uh, we have. Uh, see, I think we left off with Donna last time. We've got Wesley Lumpkin, David Goodson, Joe Zielinski, Jeff Best, and Rob Durand. All right, folks, thanks so Cheers, much for, for watching and joining us tonight. Well, Cheers just to you. remember, we're the Scotchy Bourbon Boys. You can find us on all the major podcast formats. Uh, we are also on Facebook. Uh, join our Facebook group, the Scotchy Bourbon Boys. I know we are live on other groups. Uh, we have no problem if you want to stay with one group one or more another. We come here, Justin Whaley. Hello, Justin. Hey, Thanks for jumping Justin. in. Justin. And then also we are on YouTube. Check us out on YouTube. Uh, we've been putting everything out there. Uh, we need uh, make sure that wherever you're watching or listening to us, uh, that you make sure you like, share, share, and subscribe. subscribe. So and uh, leave us good comments. So we are in the process of getting our Instagram and our LinkedIn together. Uh, we are also on TikTok. Amazing, right? Yeah. YouTube. Uh, you know, uh, check out our shorts. Check out all the podcasts on YouTube. I mean, it's just we're everywhere. And then all the major podcast formats. Someone asked me, can I listen to you? Ask Alexa. Ask Siri. Go to Spotify. You know, Deezer. Uh, I mean, we're on the podcast formats. There was We're there. Yeah. So check us out there. Remember, we're the Scotchy Bourbon Boys. Uh, and good whiskey equals good friends and good times. You got it. So remember, go out there, live your life, and make sure that you live your life dangerously. Good night, folks. Thanks for joining us. <coughs>
Justin says good evening. But uh, if you have any questions and you're watching right now, feel free to add, ask them because we're more than willing. I have a question. Yeah. I have some more of that barrel strength. You got the right glass? I think so. Yeah. Ooh. Thank you. You're welcome. This this barrel strength, uh, folks, was actually signed by Alex Hernandez, and uh, I was right there when he signed it. It was, I I, I want to, it's everybody out there in the mil military. We have Super Nash, we've got uh, whiskey, whiskey, Nash military, all you know, Merchant Marines, Army, you know. and and those of us that didn't serve. Our hearts were with you, and we have nothing but respect for you. Well, and we appreciate the the sacrifice that you had to make. One, you you know, in some cases, you've left our country and gone over to p places where you've seen uh, living hell. I mean, it's just there's no. I just can't believe. Uh, I'm so proud of these people at Horse Soldier and the the twelve people in the green berets and then also alex and how they i mean you just watch the movie and and they're they're in a place that's unfamiliar and death is everywhere i mean you have to deal with death of children you have to deal with all the different and i've always seen as far as an observer and once again a watcher and what it does to a man to go over there and 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 basically kill or be killed situations, and then actually have to go in, go into that part of the brain. You know what I mean? And some people can handle it, and they come back and they do okay. And then other people, they just see the way the world, how that other half. And the shit world that's there. And they come back to this world that we live in. That we're somehow not happy with. Right. I don't understand it all. Because they see the worst of the worst. And then what that does to the inside of a mind. That's where yeah. the PTSD. Our worst day is far better than... Their Most best. of their best days, yes. I mean, the, if you watch 12 Strong, it's just watch the warlord when he talks to uh, Mitch, and he, which is played by Chris Hemsworth. And what he says to him, you know, it's like you just don't, you can't understand. It's just like they get across the fact that you can't understand what it's like to not, to get up every day, fight for what you believe in, but not know whether or not, your wife or kids are going to be killed or exist after your wife or kids have been killed and keep fighting. I mean, it's just a different world. So to all the, the military people, we raise our glass. You, you, got, you have a little I left guess in there. I was going to get some more cast drink. So. You, you already had some more. I know, but we'll I Get some drink. more of that small batch for the, <laughs> the toast, okay? We all raise right. our glass. Scotchy <laughs> bourbon boys, raise our glass to you. Because it's not like I think I'm just thanking you for your service. I understand all the shit that ha that you had to go through, and whether or not you've been able to deal with it, uh, it's just like no, we love you. All right, good Cheers. night, everybody. You want to go? Well, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. We're gonna. The watershed story. A watershed moment might be pivotal, but it might also be quiet and fleeting. It could be a monumentous occasion, a cause for celebration, an enormous triumph or a small daily victory. A watershed moment could be a rekindling or an observation or a gathering. Any opportunity to relish with friends and family, it's whatever you choose to cheers to. Who you're gathered around and whatever's worth celebrating. We founded Watershed Distillery on the principles of community in 2010. We wanted to live in, work in, and contribute to the community in which we grew up. We aimed to create spirits and stood apart in quality and character. Along the way, we set out to form a community of our own, one that could gather together to savor, celebrate, and enjoy good spirits and company.
We've grown from a tiny little still and two guys in jumpsuits to a dedicated team of over 40 people and two much larger stills. If you're ever in the area, stop by so we can introduce you to our team and pour you some of our award-winning bourbon. Creating it was our watershed moment, but we want to hear about yours.